welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and I am here with a book review. Today I'll be talking about The Last Ranger by Peter Heller. So Peter Heller is uh, an author who's been on my TBR list for quite some time and some of his earlier titles are still on my list. However, uh, several months ago I saw that he was coming out with a new book and I was able to request it through Overdrive. Um, when that uh, functionality was still available. So that was delivered to my Libby account as soon as it was released. Um, before I get into what this book is, um, I wanna talk a little bit about how it's described. This book is described as both a mystery and a thriller. Um, and I don't think either of those are an accurate description. It's not a mystery. Um, there's nothing actually mysterious about it and that's fine. Unless you go in expecting a mystery. That's why I feel like I want to talk about this first. It's not a mystery. Um, I think to be a mystery, you have to try and figure out who did something. And that is not an element in this book. Um, now, as for being a thriller, if you were to write down the events of this book, like in a list, it would definitely look like a thriller. However, it is not paced like a thriller. So I don't feel that it is accurate to describe it as a thriller either. Um, instead, I would just call this a sort of deep dive character driven look at a man and uh, a time in his life. Yes, there's a, a plot in there that's kind of, you know, there's a little bit of intrigue, there's a little bit of something's going to happen. But really, the story is about Ren. And Ren is a park ranger at Yellowstone National Park. Um, through this book, we hear a lot about what has happened in Ren's earlier life. His mother, pretty much abandoned him when he was younger. He, he was raised by his father. His wife, who was the love of his life, had died, I think probably, um, it seems like it was several years earlier, but I think in the book it said it was only like one or two years earlier, so he's a widow. Um, and now he lives by himself in Yellowstone National Park in a group of cabins that are reserved for rangers. Um, and it sounds like there's only one other person living in this area, and that is a large mammal biologist <laughs> who specializes in wolves named Hilly. So if you are familiar with Americans National pa America's National Park System, you do know that uh, things like hunting and trapping are uh, pretty much prohibited in these areas. However, um, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. There is poaching that happens. Wren is alerted to the fact that something is going on. Um, he, he actually happens upon someone who is chasing a bear with a dog, which off-leash dog, which is actually, it's illegal to have an off-leash dog in, I think any national park, but definitely in Yellowstone. Um, can't shoot bears in Yellowstone. Um, and it's, I'm sorry for the noise. My husband and daughter are cooking. So sorry for that. <laughs> um, so he goes back to Hilly and it, it turns out that Hilly has been having her own issues with this particular person and she believes that this person is out to get her and from there plot ensues and i don't want to say much more about the plot the plot is interesting enough um and it will keep the story going but i think that the real gem of this story is in the writing this is a very lushly descriptive book um you get wonderful nature descriptions you get uh a lot of insight into what life is like in yellowstone national park if you are like me and you follow the Instagram account Torons of Yellowstone, you see a lot of that too. <laughs> and if you don't know what Torons of Yellowstone is, this is basically people filming other people being idiots at Yellowstone and other national parks. And um, there is, you know, there's passages of him going fly fishing and what he experiences doing all that. We do get deep dives into his past and we see an evolution of his character really through flashbacks from his past, from his childhood up until where he is now. So what I loved about this book, I love the writing. The writing is gorgeous. I loved how it brought Yellowstone to life. Yellowstone is a place that I really enjoy. It's very dear to my husband's heart. Uh, we have been there. I've been there several times. My husband and I together have been there a few, uh, a few times. Um, and we have a lot of great memories from that area. Uh, but we're always tourists there. And so it's really nice to see the the other side of it you know the people who live in the park and what's going on um i also really liked you know we get what Ren's job is but we also get what hilly's job is as a, a large mammal zoologist or large mammal biologist i can't remember the exact term um and the attachment she has to the packs of wolves that she is following um i thought that the actual 
plot-ish part that is the th not really the mystery, but really the thriller, but not really, um, was pretty well done. It was interesting enough. Um, I kind of learned a lot about the dynamics of things going on in that area and the communities right around um, Yellowstone. Um, and I can see everything that happens in there happening, happening in real life. The sort of antagonist character I also thought was surprisingly interesting. He's not what she, I mean, every time you think this character is going to be a certain way, you learn something about them that's not. Um, and I think that through this character and through what happens in the book, Ren is able to actually realize things about himself. Um, as for what I didn't like, mostly I didn't like the marketing of this book because I was told that this was a mystery. I realized pretty early on it wasn't a mystery, but it was a mystery thriller, and it's not a thriller. I can't blame Peter Heller for that. Peter Heller did not come up with the marketing. And the book on its own, if I had been told this is a character-driven novel about a man of self-discovery in Yellowstone, I would have said, this is absolutely wonderful, but I spent the entire book expecting something else because the publisher or the publicist or whoever described this book as something other than what it is. Um, so I can't really blame the book for that, but I do feel like if you are interested in this book, you should probably know what you're getting into with it because there are people actively telling you it's something that it is not. Would I recommend? I gave this book an A and I would definitely recommend this book. Um, I would recommend this book especially to people who like the works of William Kent Kruger. I am one of them. I'm a huge William Kent Kruger fan especially his standalone works, which currently are Ordinary Grace and This Tender Land. Um, he has another one coming out next month, The River We Remember. I haven't read it yet. It's not out yet. Um, because these are definitely slower than his Cork O'Connor books. But there is still that sort of love for the land and the love for the environment that is there, even more so. This is more of an environmental book. Um, if you love the national parks, this is a fantastic book because you get to be in a, na a national park with Ren. And if you love character-driven novels, this is one of the best that I've read. Just realize it's not a mystery and it's not a thriller. It's about a guy trying to figure out his way in the world. So as I said, I gave this an A and I do recommend it. Just be sure you know what you're getting into with it. And that is The Last Ranger by Peter Heller. And it was released, I think just recently, it was <laughs> released on August 1st of 2023 by Knopf. Um, you should be able to easily get it at a bookstore, although there might be holds on it at the library because Peter Heller is a fairly popular author. And I am actually very interested in reading the other books of his that I have on my TBR list. So thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.